The big story at the Bivouac Monday was the controversy surrounding Carlos Sainz and an alleged collision with Kees Kulin. The Dutch quad rider claims the Spanish Peugeot driver hit him at high speed on Saturday's stage and failed to stop and help, but Sainz denies there was any contact. With little or no evidence, the stewards are relying simply on the testimony of the two Dakar veterans. Uh, my arm is uh, bruised, so that was how close it was. With the difference of 150k, he hit me, I went off. Um, but if he would have been like 20 centimeters to the left, it would be my full body. And you know, 153 with a car on your body, that's the end of everything. This is the damage where the Peugeot allegedly clipped Coolen's quad. After a lengthy FIA stewards meeting, rally leader Sainz has been penalized 10 minutes, bringing his overall lead to under an hour. Both parties are left unsatisfied by this outcome. Ten minutes, completely arbitrary. Why not one minute? Why not ten hours? I think if we had a ten minute lead, it would have been a one minute penalty. There's no logic. We will of course be launching an appeal, so ultimately I hope we'll know the winner of Dakar 2018, the 40th, in six months. The 2010 Dakar winner and 2018 Dakar leader is clearly very unhappy at being penalized. It's unfair because there was no incident. I didn't touch the quad. Thank God. Because if I had touched him, we'd be in a much more desperate situation now. The truth is, I'm very disappointed and disgusted. I have never witnessed such a decision in my career. The decision is tremendously unfair. Temperatures rising as we head further south. The crews will be raring to get their teeth into this new stage. Stage 10 promises plenty of sand and navigation. My aim is to get through the stage with no problems. That's the ambition. I love these people, you know, really uh, honest people, you know, fantastic to, to come here and to, to, to see all the people who support uh, us in uh, Dakar, you know. We are definitely in Argentina now. While having left his Peruvian homeland last week, Nicolas Fuchs was on great form, but a disaster on stage 10. His Borgvard BX7 is stopped, losing time and dropping out of the top 10. Van Merkstein is no stranger to endurance. He won the Le Mans 24 hours in LMP2 class in 2008, and on the Dakar 2018, he's got further than he's ever got before, having retired early in his three previous attempts. Former Middle Eastern rally champion and WRC regular Khalid Al Qasimi is currently in eighth overall on his second Dakar. Driving the same spec Persia as the factory team will be helping, as will his new co-driver, Xavier Panseri. The Czech Republic's most successful rally driver, Martin Prokop, is adapting very quickly to the rigors of rally raid. He has finished both previous attempts on the Dakar inside the top 15. This year he looks good for a top 10 finish. This is Kuba Pshigonski. Young rally raid star was forced to switch from bikes to cars after a serious accident in 2014 left him with a broken back. This is his third Dakar. One of the most consistent drivers in recent Dakar history, Genial de Villiers has finished all 14 Dakars he started and he's been on the podium seven times including his win with Volkswagen in 2009. His pace is good today, he's third quickest on the stage. Bernhard Ten Brinker's strong run continues, although he isn't quite keeping up with the top four today, in danger of dropping behind de Villiers on this stage. Now, since Peter Hansel dropped an hour and 45 minutes, breaking his suspension on the marathon stage, he and co-driver Cotre have been on a mission, and today is another big push. He's beating everyone out there. Another stage win for Mr. Dakar to add to his collection, his third of the year so far. NASA Alatia's lighter Toyota with four-wheel drive and bigger suspension is not giving him as much of an advantage over the two-wheel drive Peugeots as he'd hoped. But the Qatari two-time Dakar winner is on great form, absolutely flat out, eating into Science's lead, but still slower than Petter Hansel.
Now this is interesting. Peugeot team tactics have given Carlos Sainz Cyril Dupre as his wingman today. The Frenchman, who is out of contention for the win to the tune of 44 hours, is waiting in the first part of the stage for his teammate so he can offer support and assistance as necessary. And they continue through the stage together. The Spaniard is clearly playing it safe today, consistently slower than Peter Hansel and Alatia through the stage, dropping over 12 minutes, but still in the rally lead. Dakar moves to Belen, it passes these ancient Incan ruins of El Shinkal near the small town of Londres in the Quimerville Valley. It's a ceremonial site, the eastern Rocky Hill. We called it like that based on its position. We believe that on this site there were ceremonies worshipping the sun. We also call it the Temple of the Sun. The Dill Hill was built artificially. The summit was flattened and walls, and a stair was built. It has over 100 steps. Here we are in a place called Kachanka. The Kachankas are big buildings that serve to stock things and were also workshops. We found material proof that ceramics were designed here, as well as clay molding. That's why we know it was both a warehouse and a place of production. The governor of Salta province, Juan Manuel Urtube, gave his blessing to the Dakar's arrival in his home city, Salta, on Monday. It's a show that all the people of Salta and northern Argentina can enjoy, enjoy the greatest or one of the greatest motorsport events in the world, and this year we have a special ingredient with Salta's Kevin Benavides in the leading position. Every year we have more tourists coming to visit Salta thanks to the TV footage they saw of the Dakar around the world, and when we meet them they tell us they come to see the sights they saw on TV. Queríamos este, conocer lo que habíamos visto en la tele. ¿no? It's time to meet another of our Dakar Challenge winners, Poland's Maciej Giemza. As well as his success at last year's Mazuga Rally, the 22-year-old is the reigning FIM Junior World Champion. Yeah, Dakar Challenge uh, overall Mazuga Rally was uh, such a uh, pretty good experience. Uh, there were dunes, there were uh, hard tracks. Uh, hard tracks like here. Uh, every race is a good experience but uh, it was uh, nice to meet uh, so many uh, good riders in Mertsuga Rail. Yeah, it was very, 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 very fine. Don't be fooled by his boyish appearance. Giemza is a born competitor. Yes, I will be very happy to be on the finish line and top 30 is, uh, will be very, uh, it will be success for me. Well, so far the Dakar rookie isn't far off his target at all. Heading into stage 10, he was in 31st place, 4 hours and 27 minutes off the pace overall, but only 28 seconds shy of the top 30. After hosting the Dakar 10 times back in the 80s, Algeria are back on the rally, thanks to a truck crew present in South America. The Benbekti brothers, regular figures of the Dakar, are sharing the cabin of a man truck with driver Hamzi Osmani. Not too concerned by the overall standings, their main mission is to be of assistance to the soda car vehicles still in the rally. Well, trouble in the hot sand today for trucks 505 and 518. Martin Colomy on his side, and to the rescue comes the Maz of Vishniewski manages to get it back on four wheels, but he dropped half an hour there. Eduard Nikolaev continues to lead the trucks, flying the blue flag for the Russian Kamaz master team. But it's an uphill struggle in these dunes, and he did drop some time today.
teammate Ayurat Mardi are currently fifth overall. There's something of a fight back for this crew, pushing for a third quickest stage time today. I'd like to see them power their way out of that crevice. A little bit of a hiccup here, but not much slows down these trucks. Argentine Federico Villagra is on home ground now and still the only driver who can really challenge Nikolaev for the Dakar 2018 win. He is in a close battle for the stage win with his Deroy teammate. The Dutch crew of Ton von Genuchten keeping the Argentine honest through the stage, swapping faster sector time throughout. Today's stage was as bad as the weather for us. We had an engine failure just after the rest day, after 30 kilometers of liaison, which means for this year we are out of race now, but for sure we will return. And now we are at a garage of some locals that help us to prepare the final towing solution. And it looks good, the work they do. Also a nice garage. We will continue. After we are out of race now, we have the time to help some other competitors that are still in. Today we met Carlo on the liaison and he has the same problem than we had. He also has a damaged engine. That's why we were building a road train now to bring his squad to the next camp where he can get a new engine and then hopelessly finish the race because the house where he was born is two kilometers away from the finish line and so he really has to do it. Cross your fingers for him. Well, tonight we enjoyed a little stop and go in Jujuy and we're going to be able to make the best of a good bed. See you tomorrow. Sleep well. It's another marathon over the next two days, starting with stage 11, Belen Chilecito via Fiambala. The hot sand will prove a very difficult test for all competitors. Belen is one of the key towns in Argentina's Catamarca province, nestled in the surrounding mountains of the Pampian Sierras. In fact, the area was completely uninhabited, almost impossible to access, until the fertile greenery and riverbanks brought agriculture, and thus civilization developed here. <laughs> Another fascinating and friendly corner of Argentina to discover en route for the world's greatest rally raid. Thanks for watching. Join us tomorrow when Dakar 2018 continues.